Welcome to Powder Keg USA, where we are being divided more every day, as we are played by the powers that be to take everything in your life, your liberty. So, hello, this is Greg Allison, Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm, coming to you from a swamp that is largely drained now. Kind of like it needs to be in D.C., right? Today is the 19th of May, 2020. The things that we have to talk about are quite a plenty. We're going to talk about your rights. We're going to talk about your liberty. We're going to talk about what you need to do to preserve those and your responsibility. We do have responsibilities and we have rights. We have things we need to do. But we are under something of assault now, it seems. So we're going to talk about these things. The United States was already in a pickle and it was coming on much more than a trickle. The uh, left and the right have both been very much at loggerheads. We have been uh, divided more and more. The divisions get deeper, they get frantic, they get fever pitched and there's little trust on either side. People in this country today were already before this stuff broke out afraid and frustrated and mad. Um, what concerns me is things like uh, Mr. Blimmerburgers, as I've called him, Mike Blimmerburgers on a previous video, who took it upon himself to flip Virginia from red to blue so that he could take the rights of the Second Amendment from me and you. What he did was he took one of the, the states where the Second Amendment was most appreciated and loved and made it a state where they're out to grab our, our rights there. On top of that, he's now taken upon himself to flip Texas and Arizona. Imagine that if you're a cowboy and you're told you can only take a squirt gun. Imagine that. Just imagine that. Texas and Arizona. If Texas is flipped, goes the nation. So what are you going to do to protect yourself? And in the meantime, while all that's going on, yeah, a lot of people are really up about that. So before this stuff broke out, people were protesting. There was huge protest in Virginia. And then suddenly all this pandemic broke out and all that quietened down for a while. Now people are protesting for other reasons. Well, that's still there too. And you think Texans won't protest? <laughs> hmm. Uh... Yeah, it's, we're, we're in a, the, the, a pickle where it could get really ugly. Our country has been divided. But with the recent things going on, the recent pandemic, with the, the take-in of rights and liberties, people are really, really, really getting more and more angry. As people lose their jobs, as people lose their income, as businesses get shut down, um, this is bad. So I'm going to talk to you. A little bit about the Constitution. I'm going to talk to you about what you can do, how you can take care of that. But as these things are getting worse, you need to know that a couple of things you can do is one, you need to be more independent. You need to more, be more sovereign. You need to, see, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to step out our independence. They're trying to step out our sovereignty. I mean, think about it. As they shut down all these businesses, they're shutting down smaller businesses. As municipalities regulate, what they're doing is they're shutting down the mom and pop uh, outfits that used to fix HVAC and do electrical repair and plumbing. It's all going to bigger and bigger companies. We find that smaller shops are being shut down. Their aim seems to be either it just happens this way or it's planned this way, but they seem to not want anyone to be working independently. They want everybody to be somebody else's slave, to so work for others, to be subservient to the system to bigger and bigger entities that seems to be the game uh, well you can fight back I'm gonna tell you one thing you can do you can vote with your dollar I've said this in many videos your dollar how you spend it chooses who gets to, to play in the game don't bother stuff don't buy the stuff from the big multinational corporations don't buy the stuff that the globalist peddles Go to your local farmer, buy straight from him, help him. Go to your local producer, your local 
people that make things. Become a producer. Become a maker. Make your own stuff. Add value to the economy. But grow your own food. That may be the most important thing you can do right now because there are potential shortages. I've talked about weather. I've talked about supply chains, how supply chains are unraveling, what that can mean for food supplies. We've talked about a lot of disruptions in that area. So the food is going to be more and more challenged. It's going to get more and more expensive. But even if it wasn't, what are you eating when you buy the processed junk? What kind of franken foods are you putting in you and your family? Grow what you know. Then you feel bold because your food is gold. You know what's in it. That's what you need to do. So go to Tree Leaf Market. You know, the links are below on my channel for Tree Leaf Market. You can buy heirloom seeds, the kind you can save the seeds from and get the same plants back. Grow your garden. You can still plant. It's not too late. Start now. Get with it. And there's things coming at us that this country is on the verge of ex potentially exploding. Uh, and maybe second wave of this other stuff. And you've seen my videos about the power grid. Many, many other things. The magnetosphere is the fill strength is dropping there's a lot of challenges so prep you know get it while you can because uh, availabilities may become very hard the postal services right now are strained really hard in fact i can almost you know i've shut down my worm website but i was selling a few hey look at this scroll over here not sure i'm get there he is here's the cardinal Sometimes it's good to take a nature break, and there you are, my friends. On green rigs, swamp squirrel. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm bring the camera back out. Bye bye, squirrel. <laughs> Alright, my friends. It's important sometimes to take a nature bath, to enjoy what Mother Nature gives us, because no matter how bad it is with us, we still have this. And I do have many videos on eating from the land, how to survive and thrive. But I do teach wild edibles and things like that and gardening. You know, like I said, the primary objective of this channel is to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. So let's talk more about staying out of the hive. Um, like I said, you can go to prepwithgreg.com. You can go to trueleafmarket.com, prep supplies at prepwithgreg.com. Now, let's talk about your rights. Your rights are from the Constitution. Now there, there are many people that are doing things that are not constitutional right now. It includes state governments. A lot of state governments are operating outside the Constitution. Greg, how do you know this? How blah 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 blah. Okay, let's just, you know what, I've discovered it's harder to find the amendments, uh, the Bill of Rights and when, when I go searching online than it used to be. You got to kind of search, they want to give you a lot of discussion about it. Let's start with the Ninth Amendment. Everybody knows the Second Amendment, First Amendment. Let's start with the Ninth Amendment. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or, dis or disparage others uh, retained by the people. That's the Ninth Amendment. What does that say? What does that mean? That means, see, our founding fathers, when they set up the Constitution, they were concerned. Their concern was that if they enumerated rights in the Bill of Rights, that that would be the only rights that you had, that the government would take everything else away because it was just understood you had the rights, you know. You know, when the Second Amendment was written, for example, it was understood about why well, people were going to have the right to bear their arms in this country and defend themselves from the government after what we went through with King George. And, and by golly, people had the right to defend themselves. And we lived in a country which was a howling wilderness and people were need to hunt and protect themselves from bears. Maybe Trudeau should be put out in the Yukon with a slingshot. <laughs> that would be an excellent idea. Hey, Trudeau, that's all you need is a slingshot, my friend. All right, all that aside. Yeah, I'm not Canadian. <laughs> we have plenty to deal with here in the United States, don't we? Just for my Canadian friends, you might, you might want to remind Trudeau that maybe he should be putting out in British Columbia, Yukon Territory, around Churchill, where the bears are white. And they're always there in plain sight. <laughs> and they like to eat people, right? <laughs> so, what this is all about is the Founding Fathers decided that something had to be there to ensure that it was understood that since we were enumerating rights, that there were more rights than those enumerated. Certain rights were deemed special, needed special protection. Freedom of speech. Freedom of assembly. Yeah, freedom of assembly. We having problems in that area? Freedom of speech. 
the right to arm bears, right? <laughs> or they have bared arms? Whatever, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, those were deemed to be very important. Very, and what was the real well-regulated militia? The militia was ever able-bodied man in the country. That's what the militia was. So, real regularly, well, you know, that was meant, hey, we should, might, should organize it and train and practice. Which we don't really do that today. We have a National Guard that serves that purpose, I suppose, to some degree. But we still have these rights to the people. We're all still the militia, in a sense. All that said now, there's the Tenth Amendment. The Tenth Amendment says the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to it by the states, or reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. Yes, that's what the Constitution says, to the people, to the states, not the federal government. What that really means is that if the Constitution doesn't say that it's the rights of the federal government, it's not. Huh, seems like the federal government goes a little bit beyond that, don't they? Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, there's a swamp that needs to be drained, I do believe. And it seems like the efforts to do that are lagging. <laughs> Severely lagging. Ah, so, but well, Greg, what are we going to do about the judges, the courts? They do everything however they want to. They don't pay no attention to this. They let these rogue states like Virginia do anything they want to do. Ah, but there are sheriffs in Virginia who think see things differently. Law enforcement officers, I and mean, a lot of people are worried about the military. So, my friends, if they come to you to take your rights, and you know what your rights are, get your pocket constitution, carry it with you and study it. If you know what your rights are, you can cite the Ninth Amendment. You can cite the Tenth Amendment. You can cite the First Amendment. You can cite the Second Amendment. We have freedom of religion. We have freedom of assembly. We have freedom of speech. We have freedom of many things that are enumerated. And then in the Ninth Amendment, the, freedom, the freedoms that are not enumerated are yours. They belong to you. And there's this little thing called an oath. Every law enforcement officer in the United States, every federal officer, every federal judge, every policeman, every member of the military all swear an oath. And the oath starts like this. I, whoever you are, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Let's look at that again. I do solemnly swear, and sometimes they say affirm, those words swear is considered a swear word by some, that I will support, you're going to support, and defend, let's fight for the Constitution of the United States. It doesn't say this part or that part or, well, if the judge thinks this or thinks that. No, it says the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Our founding fathers thought it was very important to add that and domestic. Well, well though it's not founding fathers <laughs> necessarily, that's been in the, the oaths. From time memorial is an all our oaths and it doesn't end you swore that oath when you ever enlisted that oath is upon you I swore that oath so defend the Constitution what is the Constitution it is a document that gives us rights it is the job of the federal government first and foremost to protect our rights to defend our borders What's the federal government there for? To defend our borders, to coin our money. I bet they outsource coining our money to the Federal Reserve. The borders are wide open, and they attack our rights. What's going on domestically, my friends? What does your oath say? So when they come to you and tell you that you can't do this or you can't do that, you need to know how does that fit with respect to the Constitution. And you tell the officer, sir, you swore an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now you swore to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And then tell them what these amendments are. Tell them what they say. Have that pocket variety. And you know what? If they violate that, you can sue them. You can sue their pants off. 
you could own their pants. <laughs> you probably wouldn't want their pants, but you, you know what I mean. Uh, you probably wouldn't want their dirty socks, but you could have them too. <laughs> so, yes, you have rights. By the Constitution, they can't take them. Oh, legislatures are always doing things. They're always passing laws. And these laws are always challenging these things that are supposed to be your rights. And judges won't fight them. They just let them go. They're not doing their jobs. They should kick these things down, but they don't. So what about that? Do you realize if you pass a law to take away somebody's rights as enumerated by the Constitution, you can't do that. That law is illegal because it, you have to have a constitutional amendment to do that. And constitutional amendments typically take two-thirds of the states to ratify unless you have a constitutional convention. It's a lot of people advocate and think it would be a good thing to get cost under control. I'm afraid that constitutional con convention might go the other way and take all our rights away from us. And then they might get rid of the Bill of Rights and might change all this sacred language I just enumerated to you. So there's risk, I fear, in a constitutional convention. It may go the other way. What we have to date in our Constitution overall is good enough. And there's talk about another amendment to be added. But that other amendment that a lot of people are talking about just enumerates stuff that's already there. Why aren't they taking care of these things? So it's clear by the Constitution already that you belong as the owner of the rights, that the federal government is there to protect your rights, which are not doing. Now there's responsibilities. You know, it, on that regard, there's things that you ought to do. One, to defend the Constitution, support and defend. But there's also things you should do for your fellow citizens, your fellow man, and for yourself. I would tell you this pandemic is real. It took my brother. I've done a video of a young person who was severely affected and in the hospital and had 20 days lost her voice. She was healthy. She jogged all the time, was outdoors, and yet it hit her hard. It's real. Whether it was planned or not, it's real. I, I have my reasons to believe it's manufactured. That it came, you know, we all know where it came from. And I'm going to talk about that more in future videos. This is not a video about that. But this, what I'm selling to you right here is you do have responsibilities not to spread it. You do have responsibilities to take care of yourself and your family. Um, now, there's a lot of disagreement on these things. And there's a lot of information flying around on YouTube. Pro, con, left, right, this, that. And a lot of it has been put out by medical doctors and medical researchers. And some of that is pure bogus. Greg, who are you say? You're a worm farm. I am a rocket scientist, by the way. I make a good living with mathematics. Somebody challenged me, what are you doing with mathematics? I was on the University of Alabama and Huntsville math team. I'm a electrical engineer, but I was deemed worthy to participate in collegiate math. That was my collegiate sport, was math. <laughs> and we placed in the top third of all colleges in the United States. We beat Cornell, where billions and billions of Carl Sagan's are from. We placed ahead of Cornell and what they did. So I was proud. I was glad to beat Carl Sagan's school <laughs> with what we did. We scored in the upper third. And there was only three of us on that math team. And from my entire college, engineering school, college, University of Alabama in Huntsville, only three of us were on the math team. And I was one of them, representing the math department in a collegiate sport of mathematics. <laughs> so there you are. Don't question me about that, my friends. I will question Neil Ferguson, though. Dr. Neil Ferguson, who, and I've questioned him before, who from Great Britain was saying, actually, maybe Scottish, I guess, but he was saying many months ago, that, oh, well, it's already spread throughout almost everybody in Britain, so it's going to peak all cases in two weeks. And he said that about six weeks ago. Well, guess what? Most people are still testing negative because it's not peaked. It's not reached most of the population. It's only hit a, uh, a certain por portion of the population. Uh, tip of the iceberg is a very small fraction so far. So this stuff is not peaked. He was wrong. Dead wrong. I said it way back then. And the cases are still growing today. So, yeah, he was wrong. Oh, well, he's also wrong again because my friend uh, uh, Diamond, from Alpine Morant's uh, project, attacked him again because he 
switch to the other side of the spectrum and was making other claims. So I guess that guy just blows whichever way the wind blows or whatever the authorities that be want him to say is what he says. So he's, you know, not to be taken seriously. And there's other uh, doctors and medical researchers out there putting out stuff like Dr. Uh, Rashid Batar. He's real popular on YouTube. Millions of people watching him, believing everything he says. Well, he has also said that I can't is absolutely not supported by mathematics. He said, if you've had the flu shot, you will test positive. No, he's wrong. Absolutely wrong. By a long shot. Hands down, absolutely wrong. Okay, how can you say that? Now you're getting mad at me, right? <laughs> he's wrong. I going to invite him on this channel, but he didn't come. So, hey, but on that point, he's wrong. Greg, how can you say that? I thought that was a fake. Well, okay, I know people have had the flu shot and tested negative. Also, I've had people, based on what he was saying, say, oh, if you had the flu shot, you, you'll get this or you'll test positive. No. 49% of the people who, in this country, have had the flu shot. You know, something like maybe three quarters are tested negative. That's the people who suspect maybe they've had the, the, the virus. Not everybody's getting tested, right? So, you take those numbers, they don't comport. That makes his claims wrong and I know people who've had the flu shot who tested negative they've told me that also my brother died of COVID-19 and he did not get the flu shot neither did his wife who was also positive for a month she's just finally tested negative and she was fortunately asymptomatic so yeah this thing is odd and how it hits people okay I didn't want this to be a video about that but you know I'm just letting you know that a lot of people out there are making claims that are controversial. Uh, I would say that some of them are wrong. Uh, Dr. Judy Mikovits is out there talking about face mask. Uh, and I would uh, check with uh, the Peak Prosperity channel and check out what they're putting out about face mask. And, and look at uh, the, the, the uh, hospital in Boston which had uh, reduced their cases by 50 percent of the new cases by requiring everyone to wear a face mask. Uh, you can look at places where they do, the case loads are going down, the new cases go down. So that's the big question. Now I don't wear a face mask. I wear one briefly when I go in and out of certain places. I wouldn't want to wear one all day because they probably do cut your oxygen down. And if you wear those things, I'll go into it more in a future video, but you got to have a protocol for how you handle them or you will be making a mess and reinfecting yourself. Most people aren't handling that stuff properly, neither the gloves nor the face mask. I'll talk about that in the future. That's not the object of this video. The object of this video is to talk to you about uh, tensions in this country. The tensions are high. And just because of that, we may explode. We may rip apart. Because people, are, or there may be incidents at least in this country, and we may not rip apart, but I would expect a lot of incidents that could happen. And we may rip apart. Especially when the second wave of this thing comes around, we may rip apart. There's other things, you know, Texas, Arizona. How are we going to react to that? Virginia is not a done story. That's not complete yet. There's still a lot of things hanging out there. There's still a lot of people trying to exact control over us. And the liberty still belongs to you. The liberty belongs to you, but also you have responsibility. That's what I want to tell you. And you can take responsibility just by doing the things that you need to do to make sure you're not spreading things. Wash your hands, you know. Keep your immune system up. I'm outdoors. It's a great place to be. Don't stay indoors. And I'm outside today enjoying the cloudy skies, the grand solar minimum, cloud nucleation, cosmic rays, the one we guess many clouds. Some people wouldn't agree with that, but we have them. There's a phenomenology that's been explained. Are we in the grand solar minimum? That's what I'm thinking. All right, that's an aside topic. <laughs> but being outside, is one of the things you can do to help yourself. You need fresh air, you need vitamin D. A little harder to get on a cloudy day, of course. But again, your responsibilities are your responsibilities to your fellow man. And it's how you take care of yourself 
your family, the elders. So if you're running around just irresponsibly, irresponsibly getting involved in everything, big crowds, and then go see your grandma and grandpa, no, that's not good. That's not good. This is real. Uh, the economy is not going to come roaring back even when we re reopen everything. Some of us just aren't going back to theaters. And some of us are going to be real choosy about going back to restaurants. In fact, I had already decided to quit going to restaurants before they shut them down. I decided for my own reasons that I would not do that to protect myself and people around me. And I was really thinking that people really ought to tone that down. Of course, restaurants will come up with other protocol to make things safer. But then again, this should be done on a voluntary basis. It is not the job of the government to dictate everything they're dictating. And my, one might even call to question their power of licensing and the other things they do, all the regulations they put upon the small guys, the business guys. All that might be called into question. But again, what can you do? You can vote with your dollar. Once again, I just to remind you, I said it many times, vote with your dollar. Vote for the small guy, vote for the local guys. Vote for the independent people. Spend your money where it will last, what's resilient. The big multinational corporations, the globalist uh, supply chain of shipping stuff all over the world, it's not gonna be there if the power grid goes down. Ah, the sun is breaking. I can get me some vitamin D treatment now. Ta-da! Of course, I can't tell you what it's good for. <laughs> can't tell you that will help prevent or cure anything. Nope, not a medical doctor. <laughs> they say it's good for your immunity. Ah, as garlic. You know, this is an antiviral. Look at this stuff about to bloom. Isn't that pretty? Still working the garden. And I'm going to be doing a video on uh, tomatoes, planting tomatoes. So, my friends, get outside. Get some fresh air, get some exercise, get some vitamin D, build your immune system up. It can't hurt you to have a strong immune system. I can't tell you what it will be good for, but I can tell you it won't hurt you to have a strong immune system. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Look at that garlic. It's elephant garlic. And down here, all about to bloom. And the tomatoes. And it's blooming too. I'm going to have to tie it up. I'll do a video about trellising also really soon, I hope. And things are blooming, they're going on, growing on. So, again, I'm also forming tribes. We need our own economies. We need our own groups. You know, within our own groups, we can kind of control who goes in and out. It's a better way to have those close ties with people and yet not be so tied in with the larger community. So you can still be human and limit the spread of things so that you can protect yourselves when everything hits the fan. So you got people that's got your back so that you can have a lot better chance of surviving, spreading the skills out, having people to have night watches. And we're forming groups, we're forming uh, groups in different parts of the country, Arizona and um, Alabama, we're active here. Uh, I got a lot of interest in the Ozarks and other regions and including other countries. So wherever you're from, if you're interested in forming a survival tribe, go to email me, put tribe, put may, put two, because I've already asked people put may once, put tribe may two, and put the email is hal, H-A-L, that's hotel, apple, lima, the Arabic number five, the word space, like up there, S-P-A-C-E, Sierra, Papa, Alpha, Charlie, Echo, how five space at AOL.com. That's Apple, Oscar, Lima.com. How five space at AOL.com. Link below in the title, but tribes may, then put a two. Just so I'll know that, you know, this is not the other made. This is, you know, you can kind of figure out when you're sending this stuff by the tile as we sort them around. It's the blackberries. Greenberries, I should say. <laughs> Future blackberries. 
the air blackberries. Everywhere here, right? Got tons of them. Plenty, plenty of blackberries. Plenty of a wild stuff growing on in addition to the garden. So, my friends, there's a lot you can do to support your locals. A lot you can do to ensure that you have your rights and liberties intact. You know what's in the Constitution? I gave you some of the key things that people don't talk about so much, the ninth and the 10th of Amendment. That's what gives you your rights beyond the rights that are enumerated. You should be familiar with this. If not, go look your Constitution up. And furthermore, share this with your local law enforcement. Share it with people in government because they have sworn to protect, to support, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. That's a big old deer track. And that's what, you know, they need to be reminded of when they come to take your rights and liberties. And, of course, you're free to remind them of that. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Blackberries. Remember when these were all in bloom just a few days ago? Pine. I showed you how to eat from pine. Here's our miraculous little sassafras tree. Sassafras tea and root beer. Sweet gum. You make Tamiflu out of. More and more sweet gum. Not too much sweet gum, really. And of course, look, more beehives. These aren't mine, actually. But I will get honey from them. It's a compensation for having them here. It's one too many things for me to have a hold of. And hopefully soon, more sacrifice. I'll be doing videos on building my habitat right here. It's one of the pr projects that my tribe's gonna take on. So if you've not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and bang the like notification bell. Because there's a whole lot more videos coming about things that you can do to survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. And this video is more about staying out of the hive. And you're going to survive, look at this. I call this billy goat grass. It's also known as wood sorrel. That's a wild edible. I should talk about that in the future, right? <laughs> There'll be many more videos about wild edibles, gardening, things going on in the world world events. There's still a lot of tension between many other countries. A lot of stuff to talk about. China. It's bigger than the 900 pound gorilla in the room. There's so much to cover. So please uh, take care of yourselves and I really thank you for watching.